Now, if you just watched the other sections, you may have noticed, Dr. D, you're not wearing gloves. And that's an excellent point. Not a bad idea to practice how you're going to play, because you may find a little bit of difference in the feel of the instruments in your hands uh, once you've got the gloves on. So feel free to practice this. There are some interesting studies that I will try to link uh, in the notes or in their post regarding the importance or value of sterile gloves versus uh, standard gloves uh, for closing lacerations uh, in the urgent care non-sterile environment. Um, and for the most part, I tend to opt for um, just using the rooms in the glove, but uh, the rooms in the glove, the gloves in the room, but focusing very much on a good clean technique um, and a good uh, antiseptic use uh, and wound prep prior to the closure. So um, the next thing that I want us to focus on uh, is an important skill that, again, if you don't think about this beforehand, it's going to catch you off guard when you're actually closing a wound. And that's going to be the manipulation uh, of transfer from pickup to uh, needle driver and then back into the needle driver. So uh, there may be times where you're about to start a suture and you realize that the angle is not quite right or the grasp is not quite right. And so you're going to want to be comfortable with um, grabbing from your pickup, repositioning. Uh, a lot of times having your hand or arm resting uh, on uh, the surface to kind of stabilize things. You'll note if you've got the coffee shakes or it's the end of a long shift, you'll want that bit more stability. Uh, and then you will simply reposition and re-grab. Re, uh, re and also after every push through, whether you're going to do... Um, one wound edge, pick from the middle, the other edge, or close it in one single throw. At the end, you're going to need to um, grasp the needle as it comes out of the other edge of the wound, release, and then either uh, drive through just with a push or come to the front, grasp, and pull back through. And then once you've got that through, you're not going to be at the angle to use it again, so you're going to need to re-grab release, put it back into a position that you'll be able to throw the next suture uh, and continue through. Or you'll do your instrument tie and then repeat the process. So this is a super simple, easy to overlook aspect of uh, suturing that I think, again, the more you pay in beforehand, the more it will pay out to you and your patients moving forward. So simply getting comfortable with grabbing, release, re-grabbing at the alternate angle and practicing that twisting motion that you would use pulling it through the edge of the wound, coming back as if you've pulled out, grabbing and reclamping, uh, and then just really getting comfortable with that series of movements again and again. So get used to that twist, recollect, reclamp, a reload. Get used to imagining you're going through. And of course, when you have a suture pad, as we will momentarily, you'll see this in action. But again, even without focusing on the wound, just getting these basic aspects of needle and pickup manipulation into your muscle memory are going to pay off uh, hugely when it comes to the uh, actual practice of suturing in clinic and caring for patients with wounds. So, that simple practicing that handoff until it becomes uh, second nature and just something that you can easily do, uh, even if you got a little bit of a shake, as long as you're stable when things uh, are going on. That's all that matters. Getting that practice of coming through, recollecting. And this is the time to practice this. If you drop this all over the place when you're practicing over your suture pad, uh, the only one that's going to know is you or whoever else you tell, and no one's going to be upset about, no one's going to care about that, because sucking at something is the first step to being pretty okay at something, and then from there we move on to proficiency. So you're so close already, but uh, much better to work the kinks out of your systems, your preference for holding now in a practice environment before you even come into one of the workshops, so that when you are doing this in real life, um, again, your brain power is focused on your interactions with the patient, their comfort, and the quality of the sutures and the wound closure, less on the fine mechanics of movement. So 
Thank you again for the, your attention during this super simple exercise. And next, we will move on to instrument ties and then the actual process of moving uh, a suture through a wound uh, and the different types of sutures we may use. So thanks again and see you later.